Hello and welcome. I'm Marat Tuwe, and you're watching A New Horizon, episode 14. Uh, today we're going to be doing something I consider pretty fun. We're going to be making a mob farm. Not like cow mob farm, like witch mob farm. Uh, and to do it, we're going to be taking advantage of witchery, red recraft, thermal expansion, and the uh, random things mod. Uh, the basic idea of what we're going to be doing is we're going to be stealing a witch spawner from a witchery structure, which appears randomly in the world, which I happen to find one of right over here. This has got a, a little dispenser as like a chest and two witch spawners. You don't want to go here at night, it would not be pleasant. Uh, we're also going to be uh, supercharging that spawner with a, where is it called? It is a spawn controller, I believe, from Redderycraft. Spawner controller. There we go. So using this, you can actually increase or decrease the spawn rates of a spawner. Um, and using that, you actually have to supply it power. Um, normally, it's kind of daunting for Redderycraft to create a compact or even localized power system. Thanks to the fact we are running thermal expansion, though, we're going to be able to use something called the magnetostatic, I believe it is, generator. Let's see. Magnetostatic engine, okay. And what this does, this allows us to take redstone flux and convert it into actual uh, power and rotary craft. So we'll be able to just hook into our existing system. Uh, it is worth mentioning that doing this is going to use quite a bit of uh, redstone flux, so this is not something I'm going to be running all the time. But even if I let it run for, say, half an hour, I'm still going to get a good good amount of glowstone, of redstone, and of gunpowder. Plus, I'll have a nice collection of potions that I can use or trash as I see fit. Um, the only thing that I have seen that will actually give me a little bit of issue is that thanks to witchery, witches drop witches' hands and they drop really, really commonly, so I'll need to make sure that I filter those things out or else whatever I'm doing is going to quickly fill up with those stupid things. And they're not stupid, they're just, they're really common. <laughs> Alright, anyway, so the first thing that we're going to get going on this is that I need to actually uh, prep the area that I'm going to have the witches uh, spawn slash die in. And I'm thinking that I want to have it in here in the magic room, it would just be fitting. And I want to have it roughly dead center for where I'm going to put the uh, witch's spawner, which would be right down here. Let's go ahead and break this up. Um, I believe the spawn range on this thing is going to be... Let's see, that's... I'm not actually going to need to take away all of the space. I am just, however... Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's good. We'll be uh, putting back most of this uh, floor, so it's not going to be a horrible gaping hole. Alright, this should be deep enough. So the uh, next thing on my agenda, we are going to go ahead and bust out these walls and replace it with stone brick, so it actually uh, looks interesting, if not okay. Ooh, iron. Ooh, manganese. I'm sorry, I can never turn down copper. And I just used all of my freaking uh, cobblestone. I get distracted while mining, so I may intend to do something, but I might kind of just wander off. Hopefully I um, do not stay gone too terribly long. Alright, so we are uh, pretty much done digging a hole down here. As you can see, I've got a uh, nice little deep hole here with uh, some conveyors in the bottom, which will push anything that lands on them into the center here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have there be a row of, well, spikes, 
returning from the ground to kill anything that falls upon them. Uh, actually, I need some stone as a base here. Nope, oh, that's too much. My inventory is getting full of crap. Or junk. Yeah, whatever. So there's going to be the spikes are like this. There we go, that's good. And we're going to go down one... There's going to be a room below this, though. It's only going to be a small, small room. Now, the astute observer is probably wondering how the heck am I going to be getting out of here. Uh, the simple answer is I'm going to be using this ender border. Um, before we get too far into that, though, I'm going to put down a chest here. And on the chest we have an... You know what? No, we're not going to put the chest right there. I want the ender border there. We'll put the chest here and the item collector there. Alright, so what this will do is it will pull items in from a set radius. Um, right now it's going up three blocks, three blocks this way, and then three blocks that way, and that way. Well, yeah. It's going three in the north-south and three in the east-west. Um, that's actually probably more space than I need. Let's go ahead and bump that. No, actually, no, it's not. Um, do four, four, and four. That should get all that I need. Okay, we have those, and I did not make the impulse item ducks. Poop. Alright, tell you what, let's go ahead and... Alright, so what this ender porter does, this is kind of like the um, elevator block from Open Blocks. The difference is this is pretty much instantaneous and it always goes up or goes down if you supply it a redstone signal. Um, if I use this right here, it's going to teleport me on top of that stupid spike. We're not going to do that. Uh, oh, duh. Okay, so what we are going to do, though, so we are going to walk this way. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the entrance to this in the side of the main doorway that I got. Uh, so for now, we're just going to go up. Oh, that... I barely missed that. Alright, we are back with uh, Block Teleporter. I'm just going to go ahead and extend the little land bridge that I'm on right now out a little further so I have a little bit more working room. There we go. We're going to put it like so. And we're going to take the teleport... Well, the teleport. We're going to take... We're going to take the target card, because I can really speak right. I really I promise you I can. We're going to take the target card. We're going to right click. Uh, we're going to shift right click. Okay, and now that has the block right here as the teleport target for whenever I put it into this one. Um, so always active, that's good. And we don't need to put anything in there for now. So the next thing on the agenda is to go get some uh, witch spawners. Now, normally, I would want to go ahead and get the machine set up for Redercraft for this right now. However, I want to get the spawner in place to make sure it's going to work in this area and that this will kill stuff first. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go on a short little odyssey. All right. So we need to be quick in here. I do not want to die. Uh, hey, redstone. So it should be... There we go. Mob Spawner Witch. I'm going to go put this in. The wrong way, of course. Okay. Put that in. Okay, it's not going to do anything because it doesn't have a target. And as soon as we put that in, poof, the uh, spawner's gone. Okay, let's go ahead and get back home. Alright, there you have it. This is a basic witch farm. 
Currently the witches are spawning in from the spawner, falling onto the iron spikes and dying. Anything that they drop is collected by the item collector in the room below the kill zone, which is then fed into a chest where it's buffering at the moment. Uh, due to the insane amount of witch's hands you get, I think you get one per witch. Those are being voided to a trash can right now since I really don't need that many. Um, so the next few things we need to do, I need to go ahead and get the Rotary Craft stuff set up so that I can actually supercharge the spawns on this. And I also need to run a line of ME cable over here and get an ME interface so that I can pull this stuff into my system without having to go downstairs all the time to uh, do maintenance. Though I do admit I like these uh, little ender porters very much so. Alright, let's see what we got down here. 45 sticks, 31 redstone, 15 glowstone, plus 8 I've used already. 27 gunpowder, 27 spider eyes, 29 sugar, 43 bottles, and a potion of healing. Oh, look, we're getting more stuff. So this is actually, this is quite good. I'm happy with this already. And I can't wait to see what happens. I'm going to kick this thing up to ludicrous speed. Alright, so next up is some basic uh, rotary craft machines. What I'm going to do is get together a, uh, what is it called? I need to make HSLA steel. To make the HSLA steel, I need a blast furnace. So I'm going to go ahead and make a blast furnace, get a bunch of the steel set up, and I will join back with you as soon as I get a work table set up so that I can work on getting a magnetostatic engine as well as a uh, what I need. I need to make a CVT unit as well as a 16 to 1 gearbox and for the purpose of what I'm doing I'm going to need it to be a diamond gearbox so that I can give it lubricant once and not worry about giving it any additional lubricant. Um, if it were bedrock it wouldn't need any lubricant. If it was uh, I believe you can do stone, iron, and wood as the other ones. Let's uh, check it out actually. Gear box. Wooden, stone, steel. Okay. So the steel, stone, and wooden gear boxes, they all take lubricant. If you don't give them lubricant, they wear down. And the wood wears down really quickly, and I think it might actually have a max amount of energy it could use. The um, bedrock, you don't need lubricant on. It never gets damaged. The diamond, you need lubricant, but it does not consume it. So that's going to be the one I'm shooting for. And it's not actually too terrible to make. I should have a good amount of diamond set aside already. If not, I'll go mining. I have a Fortune 3 hammer. Welcome back. Alright, so I've got my uh, blast furnace... Oh, stop that. I've got my blast furnace set up over here. I have created some HSLA steel as well as got started on making some basic pieces. I have a shaft unit and some base panels. Um, and I have a work table. The work table is what you have to use to craft the vast majority of the rotary craft recipes. Um, the base panel and the shaft unit are an exception to that, as are the blast furnace and the work table itself. Uh, so what I want to do right now is create a magnetostatic engine. Um, unfortunately, there is no like shift-click integration into this, so I have to do it by hand. It's fairly straightforward, though. I need a shaft unit, two of the base panels, two silver, two lead, the copper, and a redstone conductance coil, which I already have. There we go. Lead, lead. Silver, silver. Panel, panel, and shaft. And this turns green, and we can make a magnetostatic engine. That should probably be above the items, not below it. <laughs> Alright, so this is going to be the main workhorse for our spawner. Uh, let's go ahead and just put it down right there for now. Uh, so what this does, this allows us to convert redstone flux into actual jewels, which will be what's powering all of our uh, mob spawning needs over there. We're also going to be co-opting this for some lubricant production before we get too far. Alright, which brings us to the next point. I need to make a grinder. Let's see, to do this I need three base panels, two HSLA steel ingots, 
two saws and a HSLA steel gear. Alright, so as you can tell, this is kind of, oops, that's the wrong block. As you can tell, this mod is kind of iron heavy. Are you kidding me? That's also not in the work table? Okay. Um, how about these saws? Okay, which are the HSLA steel gears with extra steel. Okay, let's go over here. Alright, so I have the three of these. Two of them I need to turn saw blades. Alright, so one, two. Okay, that's good. I need to make some more of those base panels. Okay. Alright, I should have everything I need. Base panels on the bottom. Saw blade, saw blade, gear, ingot, and ingot. Alright, and this gets me a grinder, and we'll be using the grinder to actually make the lubricant you need to stop the gearboxes from destroying themselves. That does look pretty awesome, though. I, I do need one last thing. I need a screwdriver. Specifically, I need this screwdriver. This thing is pretty much the most important tool you will ever run into while messing with Rotary Craft. Alright, so we have everything we need at the moment to go ahead and hook up our spawner to a uh, spotter controller. What we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and just really gently pop off this paver slab off the top of it. Like so. Uh, it's okay that fell, we'll pick it up from the chest down below later. And we're going to add in our spawner controller. Oops. I suggest not falling down there, Wolf. That will be fatal. Uh, so right now, this is not going to do anything. It has no power. Uh, let's actually turn off. There we go. So it has no power. It's not going to do anything. To work, it requires a fairly decent amount of power. It's uh, 131,000 watts. And the speed is going to be based on... the Rather, the delay is going to be based on the speed you put into it. Essentially, the higher the speed, the less of the delay you get. And you actually run the power directly into the mob spawner instead of into the uh, spawn controller. So, as it turns out, the amount of power that I'm putting out from this and rotor craft is uh, too much for diamond or steel. I would need bedrock. And I don't have bedrock. Uh, so, we're going to be doing a slight rethinking of this. Alright, so we are skipping a little bit ahead here. Um, I have figured out the problem that I was having with the spawner. Everything's hunky-dory down there now. Uh, just to recap, we have the mob spawner, which is getting power from the 16 to 1 gearbox, which is connected to the CVT unit, which is connected to the magnetostatic engine, which now has its own redstone energy cell backup for power. Oh, I don't want to go here, I want to go here. Alright, so this is the actual power that gets drained whenever I turn this thing on. I will drain my main system, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to limit the amount of power that can actually come into this, so that at most I'm only ever going to have, say, about a uh, 300 redstone flux drain on my main pull. That'll still cap out what my engines can produce. Actually, tell you what, let's go ahead and just put it to 200. So that will mean that once this thing drains, it's not going to do anything. Um, I will only ever need to run this in short bursts, however, so it's not going to be a too terrible thing. Uh, there is some red alloy wire and frame running up here to the side. Uh, when we go back up, you'll see there's a button that I can use to toggle this on off, and there's also the wireless receiver here, so that I can do it by remote. Let's go ahead and get back down here. Alright, so the uh, collection chest is still here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a ME interface right where this cable is, and I am going to use a mixed thing of the impulse item ducts and the ME interface. Um, what I'm going to do is have it by default these item ducts are going to extract everything. However, the default route for the uh, what is it, which is hand sticks, potions, and glass bottles is going to be the trash can. Everything else will be pumped into the ME system. 
right now I am in the middle of cooking up some glass, so that works. Oh, I should probably uh, plug this hole. There we go. And if I wanted to turn this thing on, I would just hit the button and get some really crazy spawns going on down there. Alright, let's go ahead and turn that off. We don't need that to run for a very long period of time. Alright. And that is going to run until the internal buffer of the uh, engine is killed, which should be fairly quickly. That's, uh, that's just glorious. Anyway, so this is probably going to wrap it up for today. Um, there's some more stuff I'd want to do, and I might look into a way of setting it up so that I can actually change these spawners out on demand, though that is going to take a uh, bit more work than what I'm willing to do at the moment. Uh, for now, I have a ready supply of redstone, glowstone, gunpowder, and if I want it, potions. Um, I might look at doing that to a separate ME network or some other, say, storage crate or something, um, but at the moment, that's not a priority. Um, I want to go ahead and thank you all for watching this episode of A New Horizons. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a message below. And as always, this is Marat Tuey saying have a good day.